Hey friends, uh, my name is Nathan Laundry, and today we're going to talk about what to do when somebody submits some code like this to your shared project, right? So let's say you're working on a class project or you're in a bigger team and somebody sends some illegible, poorly formatted code. What do you do? Well, you, you could cry about it. You could yell at them about how bad their code is and hope that they fix it. You could spend the next 10 hours of your life manually formatting every line of code they've ever written, or you could do what we're gonna talk about today, which is using auto formatters, and then later on we're gonna talk about linters. So, um, now I'll be honest, right? Like this is kind of a joke example, right? Most people aren't going to be writing code this illegible once they hit a certain level, right? Your editors are probably auto indenting a little bit for you. Most of first year is usually just your profs yelling at you to never use global variables and to indent your code and to put a comment every now and then, right? So most of us, and by the time we've hit third year or we're going into industry, aren't doing this. What is a lot more common than this is when you have two equally well-meaning programmers who are also probably pretty good, who have different opinions about what well-formatted code looks like, right? So you've got like person A and person A is like, I, I want two spaces per indent uh, and I want my curly braces on the same line, right? And then person B who has the correct opinion is uh, like a four tabs or four spaces per tab kind of person, right? Or something like that. And so you could solve this problem by just agreeing on a new set of like structures, right? So you gotta have some negotiation and you're like, no, I really need the four spaces or I will lose my mind, right? And you do these negotiations and then you like agree on a format in a markdown document and you just try to override years of practice doing it one way. It's not the best approach, right? Um, and lastly, nobody wants to spend all their time formatting code, right? What we want to be doing is writing code. At least some of us do. I prefer the DevOpsy kind of space, but whatever, right? <laughs> so you want to be writing code. What we can do to save us from all this heartache is to use auto formatters. And in this case, because we've got a JavaScript project in front of us, we're going to be using Prettier. Uh, so Prettier is kind of like a pretty industry standard, highly opinionated from what they say, um, auto formatting tool. Right? So let's take a look at what that does, just as an example. We're going to run it and then explain how we get here. So uh, as you can see, we can go back and forth actually. Right? Ugly, illegible nonsense, readable, well indented, makes sense. Right? Like, that's, that's significantly better. So how do we get here? Uh, well, we can go ahead and do some npm install stuff. Uh, so to get prettier, it's just a node Thing that we're going to install. We're going to do a classic npm install. Uh, we're going to, in our terminal, we're going to give it a dash dash save dash dev as one of our flags. The reason we do this is because we want this as a dev dependency, right? When we bundle our application and send this off to the world, we don't really need prettier to be bundled with it. We just need this during our development time. Um, the prettier example, like guidelines or tutorial, includes this dash dash save exact flag. Um, that's just going to say, hey, I want exactly this version of Prettier from now on, not sort of like a rolling release, I'll like update my Prettier. And that might be useful if like Prettier changes down the line and you don't want to update your configuration um, along with them, right? Cool. So we can go ahead and run this. I'm not going to because I already have Prettier installed, but you can, you can go right ahead. Once we do that, there's a couple other things we need to do. So I'm going to jump over to my notes to go grab some code. Cool. So uh, what we can do here is do a node dash dash eval. What this does is say, hey, node, which is a sort of a JavaScript runtime environment thingy, I'm a, I want to run some, some code here, some JS code. Uh, and that code is basically designed to just give us a prettier RC. That's a prettier config file. So we're going to go the FS file system, write file sync. We're creating a dot prettier RC. So dot, uh, files that start with dot are hidden for the most part, right? So we have this hidden prettier RC file. And inside it, we're gonna give it these, these curly braces, right? Sort of JavaScript object or JavaScript object notation, empty object type of thing. And we're gonna end it with a new line. Awesome. <clears throat> After that, once we've got a prettier RC, um, which by the way, we can just take this line and drop that in our terminal, right? That's, that's all, we, all we would do there. Same thing we're going to do to create a prettier ignore file. Um, so we, we would 
node dash dash eval, and then we would go ahead and fs dot write file sync, blah, 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 right? Um, you are more likely to just copy paste that because that makes more sense than typing this out, right? <laughs> uh, Pretty or ignore is going to work a lot like your git ignore file. So we're basically saying, hey, ignore uh, stuff in the build and in coverage, right? Don't don't go trying to auto format that or reporting to me that the formatting sucks there because I don't care. Um, same thing when I don't care about stuff in my Git, right? Once we've got that set up, we need an RC, we need, we need an ignore file, we've got those ready to go. Then we can start using Prettier. So we're gonna start down here in our terminal and then we're gonna integrate it with VS Code more specifically, right? I don't know, what about that was specific? Sometimes I say strange things. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna start with NPX. So NPX basically lets us run kind of like node applications or packages on their own, um, sort of context independent. And we're gonna go NPX prettier, which is what we just installed, dot. So this kind of works like git add dot, right? We're just saying basically everything in this working directory and down, right? Uh, and then I'm gonna start with a check, right? You can use a dash dash check, which just tells you what's where errors are. Right, so this is saying to me, hey, in app.js, which we saw earlier, this guy is full of ugly, <laughs> right? You should probably go take a look at that. I've got some warnings for you there. So that's, uh, that's pretty useful. You can know where to look. When there are easily fixed or like auto formatable things, we can just do a dash dash right. And I'll show that here. Um, and usually that works. <laughs> Uh huh. Let's go ahead and try that again. Oh, it just did an update. Okay. So let's go ahead and overwrite. Let's try that one more time. Boom. Okay. Weird issues. Sometimes stuff happens and we fix them. Uh, I'm going to undo that because I want this to be broken for further examples. Now, auto formatting is great, but it's not like the end all be all of like auto reporting on code quality in the world, right? We can do better. Well, not better, but we can supplement this. Uh, and that's where a tool called ESLint comes in. ESLint is a tool, it's a linter, just um, that, that points out errors that aren't just related to formatting. So sometimes, for example, we do things that might lead to poor like sustainability of our code or like modularity of the code, uh, stuff like that down the line, right? When we leave in a bunch of functions that we're not using instead of getting rid of them or uh, a bunch of unused variables, unused variables, super common, um, things like that, ESLint can pick them up, right? So this is the process of, of linting, just picking up code quality issues. Um, so let's take a look at installing ESLint and then we'll talk about a couple of really interesting errors that we can get. This, uh, this function is actually full of examples. Well, one particular example. So um, to install ESLint, we can go ahead. Uh, I'll be releasing this as a much better uh, formatted file later, but we can go ahead and npm init. Uh, we're gonna do an at ESLint slash config uh, at latest. And what this is going to do is give us sort of a bare bones config file for ESLint in our project, right? So let's go ahead. I'm not gonna run that because I've already got that going on, but you will. Then we'll get this. So um, this is some extra stuff that we'll come back. This is some extra stuff that we'll come back to. This is what you would have uh, by default, right? So basically it's saying, hey, which files should I take a look at? And this basically says uh, from here, uh, all files from here downward, from uh, all files that end in either JS or MJS or CJS or JSX, uh, those are the ones you need to be worried about. Um, and it's going to run ESLint on them. So from there, we can do the usual stuff, right? So the same way we invoked uh, Prettier, we can invoke ESLint. We need to tell it, hey, from the command line, use NPX. We're gonna do ESLint. And from here, tell me what files you wanna check. I'm gonna check app.js, right? And just a heads up, this is just like a baseline React project, right? With that one ugly line of code. So if we look back here, um, this is a table of various linting errors, right? Uh, so from here, we've got, it tells us what line and what column an error is on or a warning. 
tells us in this case, hey, uh, this function bad promise is defined but never used. So we, this is of type no unused vars um, as our linting error. Now that that's like that's fine, but it's not the most exciting thing in the world, right? If I left in some unused variables, it's not like I've ruined my code or I've missed out on some really good opportunity to learn something about best practices. But I do want to point out one really cool example. So we're going to jump over here to the uh, ESLint docs and look at some rules. I've included this additional rule, we'll talk about how to do that, called prefer promise reject errors. Um, what it does is it warns you or you know gives you an error if you don't use the built-in error type or, or error object when you're rejecting a promise. So like, why does that matter, right? Well, it, first off, it's, it's considered good practice, but why is it considered good practice? Error objects, this you know type, is automatically store a stack trace, which can be used to debug an error by determining where it came from. So if we, if we jump back to our code here, if we reject a promise with just some text, we're missing out on all this like stack trace stuff. So if we're going through the debugging process at some point and we're like, trying to figure out where something went wrong, if we don't use the error object, we're missing out on data, right? And that just means that our experience debugging is worse. We have less to work from, it's not as good. And so this, this linting error is helping us not just follow good practices for the sake of following good practices, but actually making our development and debugging process richer and better, right? That's what's really cool about linting. Um, so how do we add new errors or new configs like this? Well, first off, there's a whole host of them. So you can go take a look at some of the different rules. Um, I recommend that you don't just lob in 20 of them because then you're going to spend all your time solving linting errors. I recommend you go look for one or two new ones. Ones that you're like, oh, wow, that sounds like it would be really cool to know about. And you sort of get in the habit of better practices in your code in general, right? It can help train you to be a better developer. So <clears throat> if we want to add new rules to our ESLint config, obviously we go into the config. Crazy, right? Um, and so what does that look like? We create this new, this new guy. <laughs> uh, we create a rules list, right? And we're just, uh, we're just going to add them by name. So if we jump back over here, it's just the same thing as this, right? It's the title of that particular error which is preferred dash promise dash reject dash errors. We drop that in here, hit it with a colon, and then we're just gonna say what level of worry do we have about this? Is it an error or is it a warning? I put this as a warning, I don't really care what you do. Right? You can pick whatever you like. Um, I just like the variety um, for this example. So now when we jump back over here, uh, I'm just gonna format this because it really is hard to read. Uh, when we do this promise.reject, it will point out to us, hey, uh, you're, you're breaking this rule that you've included, right? Now, to get above and beyond uh, this like CLI example, let's integrate it into our terminal. So uh, as we did with Prettier when we installed it uh, through the terminal, <clears throat> sorry, through VS Code, uh, we're going to do the same thing with ESLint because there is a there is an extension for that. There always is. Uh, we go through the same install process, and then it'll ask you, if you haven't already set it up, it might ask you, hey, do you want to add a config file? And if you haven't done that, <laughs> you're going to want that. Um, cool. And then what happens when it's installed and hooked in is we get this great interaction where it can show us that we've got these linting errors here. You can ask for documentation. You can say, for this line, you know what? It's not a big deal. Uh, try not to do that very often, by the way. <laughs> like you, you wanna keep some consistency. Uh, so that's really nice. You can also, this will also populate your problems tab down here, right? So you can see we get the exact same uh, output as we would in the terminal, just formatted in this nice GUI, right? And you can like jump to them too. So if you click them, you can go through. So that's fantastic. <clears throat> so now we're using our formatter, Prettier, and we're using ESLint uh, to detect like code quality issues, formatting, code quality. But they don't play super nice by default. 
ESLint has a lot of responsibilities by default, and one of them is finding formatting issues, right? That's something that it does. But this steps on the toes of Prettier, right? We want to find a way to tell ESLint, hey, actually, don't worry about that stuff. Just hand that off. It's already it's already dealt with. Um, otherwise, we're going to get like double reporting of issues, or ESLint might format stuff one way, and then you're like, oh, man, but Prettier wants to format it the other way, and then you're getting conflicts. Conflicts? Conflicts. <laughs> okay. Um, really easy way to solve that is to get, <laughs> there's an extension for that, Prettier ESLint. Uh, so somebody created this sort of like, we'll call it a compatibility layer where uh, it basically just tells ESLint, don't worry about it, uh, about formatting, Prettier's got that covered. Uh, and so to do that, we installed Prettier. We've already done that. Then we install ESLint. We've done that. The last thing you need to do, unless you're working in TypeScript or Vue, is install a prettier ESLint, right? And that's the same stuff as we've done in the past. We're going to npm install that, right? Probably want to save dev that too. So once you do that, you're good to go, right? Now they're not conflicting with one another. Uh, and you've got a really nice setup in your terminal and your command line for formatting and finding code quality issues. Uh, next thing we'll talk about is how to use Git hooks and GitHub actions for this kind of process. If somebody on your team didn't go through all of the all of this setup, um, or you just forgot to do some formatting, so we'll talk about that next time.